Hey guys, let's get more news from Miami Heat, but first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Biggest takeaways from the Nets' tough loss to the Miami Heat. Entering this game against the Miami Heat, the Brooklyn Nets looked refreshed from the defeat to the Cavaliers in Paris. Coach Doc Vaughn's squad played solid defense, but lost 95-96 in overtime. Jimmy Butler and Tyler Harrow spearheaded Miami's offense, scoring 31 and 29 points, respectively. Mikel Bridges led the Nets with 26 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists, while Cameron Thomas chipped in with 23 points off the bench. Brooklyn had 55 three-point attempts, but only made 12 long-range shots. It was a disappointing performance by a squad that was typically one of the best shooting teams in the league earlier in the season. After this game, Brooklyn is ranked 16th in three-point percentage, shooting 36.6%. Coach Vaughn was displeased with the shooting struggles, but saw promising signs, even though the Nets were not hitting shots. I would believe that for the majority of those 55, we tried to create good shots and good looks for each other. The ball just didn't go in, Vaughn said after the loss. Coach Vaughn and his staff opted to focus on switching defenses. The Heat struggled to make shots because Brooklyn's players always had a hand up on every shot attempt. However, Miami built momentum in the third quarter, which led to a back and forth between both teams and overtime. Bam Adebayo hit a couple of shots in the fourth quarter to help the Heat win and finish with a whopping 11 points and 20 rebounds. This game had two crucial moments involving Coach Vaughn and his usage of timeouts. The first was JV refusing to challenge a foul, prompting Butler to hit both free throws. Brooklyn had the ball with 11 seconds left in overtime, but a timeout did not happen, forcing Mikel to take a tough shot. 11 seconds on the clock, we have shooters on the floor, great opportunity for them not to sub. We got a shooter spotted up in the left corner, Royce is peeling at the top and Cam Thomas is over in the right corner. I don't think I'd be able to draw anything up better than that, Vaughn said when asked about the timeout debacle. Now, Brooklyn moves on to a three-game West Coast road trip. It is a chance for the Nets to regain their form, but it will be a tough slate of games. How Miami Heat's Twitter reacted to overtime win over Brooklyn Nets at first, the Miami Heat looked like they would disappoint fans Monday night after a double-digit deficit in the first half against the Brooklyn Nets. That's before the Heat came back? Yep. Contrary to their trends this season, the Heat overcame a large defeat instead of being on the downside of one. If we're going to talk to about this comeback, we have to start with Jimmy Butler, who returned from his seven-game absence Monday night. Butler had 31 points, including the two go-ahead free throws, with just under 15 seconds. Performances like these show why fans missed Butler so much. Tyler Harrow also had a star night with a 29-point performance on 50% shooting. Bam Adebayo didn't have his typical offensive game, but he grabbed 20 rebounds, one shy of his career high. Fans usually complain about games being this close but the nature of the victory offset feelings of disappointment. Hell of a win, one fan said. We get to experience the big three again, 16-point comeback, Jimmy turning into Himmy, Harrow floater game, first OT win of the season. 6-1 to one in clutch games, decided by three points or less. One concern for Miami was only getting 18 points from their second unit. Caleb Martin and Josh Richardson had just nine points each, while the other three bench players had zero. Meanwhile, the Nets got 46 from their bench, nearly matching the starters. The Heat need to find production in the absence of rookie sensation Jamie Jacquez Jr. The Heat play the Toronto Raptors, 15-25, Wednesday night. Jamie Jacquez Jr. suffers injury during Miami Heat's most recent victory. The Miami Heat lost one of its core players during the team's 104-87 win over the Charlotte Hornets on Sunday night. The Heat reported that Jamie Jacquez Jr. was ruled out for the remainder of the game after suffering a left groin strain. Prior to the injury, the rookie had 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists in 14 minutes of action. Jacquez had recorded the highest scoring quarter of his young career so far, as the forward scored all 15 of his points in the first. 
The 2023 first-round draft pick has become a focal point for Miami over the past few weeks. Jacquez has started 11 of the last 12 games for a Heat team that has featured 21 different starting lineups this year. The forward is the only player on Miami's roster to appear in all 39 contests this season. Jacquez has done an exceptional job stepping into the starting lineup for the injured Jimmy Butler, who has been sidelined with a toe injury. The 22-year-old's production has increased alongside his role. The forward is averaging 16.3 ppg since becoming a regular starter. The one game that Jacquez didn't reach double digits was, unsurprisingly, the one game that he didn't start. Haywood Highsmith and Duncan Robinson both saw an increase in minutes after Jacquez left Sunday's contest. Multiple players have been forced to step up due to injuries plaguing the Heat this season. Miami could look towards their depth yet again if Jacquez is forced to miss an extended period of time due to injury. During a season that has been filed with injury issues for the Miami Heat, rookie revelation Jamie Jacquez Jr. is the only player on the roster who has appeared in each of the first 39 games this season. But that streak is over, as Jacquez will miss Monday night's game against the Brooklyn Nets at Barclays Center on the back end of a back-to-back -back set after exiting Sunday's 104-87 home win over the Charlotte Hornets early with a strained left groin. He did not travel with the team to Brooklyn for the start of the quick two-game trip that ends Wednesday against the Raptors in Toronto. I take a lot of pride in being able to be available and play games even through things that are hurting and little injuries here and there, Jacquez said. But I think at this point, this is something that we have to take a little more serious and take some time to just recuperate and get myself 100%. It just didn't feel that well when I took off, Jacquez said. It slowly started to get worse throughout the duration of the game and then it was getting toward halftime, I was talking with, Heat assistant coach Karen Butler, and we talked it over. He said I should tell the trainers when we get to the back. We came to the decision to shut it down, not try to make anything worse. Jacquez made his 15th start of the season on Sunday, finishing with 15 points on 7 of 11 shooting from the field, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1 steal in 15 first-half minutes before being held out of the second half. He scored all 15 of his points in the opening period, which went down as his highest-scoring quarter of the season. Jacquez also suffered a strained left groin this preseason missing two weeks with the injury before returning for the start of the regular season. But Jacquez and the team's medical staff don't believe this latest groin injury is as severe as the first one. And you fan, what do you think of the Jamie Jacquez Jr. situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.